Yo, this is Salup. You got a pretty big balls to watch Torian's YouTube videos. Kong is terminology which comes from the South Korean StarCraft Brood War scene. Most notably, it was spawned from the legendary Zerg player Yellow, who famously was the rival of Boxer and lost to him in a number of infamous finals and many other players. And so hence, this is where the term came from, Kong. It's the idea of like, this is a great player who always comes second. He can never win the big one. And that's it. So even though this video will actually address not just Star Wars people, even some Counter-Strike people as well. What made me think more about the topic of a Kong, because it's something that actually I noticed there's a lot of nuance that might initially be missed in it. They might think it's just someone who hasn't won yet or who's lost many times, is that the great legendary StarCraft II Kong, Sue, another Zerg player, unfortunately, uh, has just won I Am Katowice, a big StarCraft II tournament. But I saw that Stark on um, Artosis's The Pylon Show, which if you're interested in StarCraft II, I'd certainly advise you check out. Artosis always produces great analytical content. Artosis made the point on there that if you look at three of the more modern day Kongs in StarCraft II, so we've got Sue, guy who's been in many, many finals, including many, the most Cordes finals of anyone in history, lost them all. Stats, obviously former Brood War player, just like Sue, someone who came on in the last few years from Wings of Liberty onwards, and uh, not Wings of Liberty, uh, Legacy of the Void onwards. And then you obviously have Dark, obviously a fabulous player, but again, who's lost many times. His point he made was these three players, Sue, Stats, and Dark, essentially had only beaten each other in finals. And that didn't quite work. Like, actually, Dark has technically beaten Solar as well. So that doesn't quite work as, like, a perfect triumvirate of three Kongs only getting titles because they beat each other. But it does make you have to ask more questions about what a Kong is exactly. Because I agree with our horses. Those players... Dark's a bit more questionable, to me are still all Kongs, even though they did eventually win a big final, did win a big tournament eventually. So it, likewise, I think you can also look and you can say that in CSGO, the Team Liquid lineup of last year, you can make it all the lineups if you want, the one with Stewie 2K as well, you can make the lineup with Steel, but primarily the lineup with Taco in it. They were Kongs. To this day, they're Kongs. Like, obviously, they lost many, many big international finals. And what were the events they won? Small ones, and then they won one smaller, but with nice team events this year. So, yeah, okay. To be a Kong, the initial requirements are, yes, it's a silver medalist many times over, runner-up, someone who could maybe have been in position to win. That's the pattern that you've lost many, many times. I obviously did a video about this topic. It's called StarCraft Silver Sovereigns, where I went through some of the great players in Brood War and StarCraft II history. It's a few years ago, so I haven't gotten the more modern players, obviously. But I went through some of those, just gave my thoughts on them. But here's one of the nuances I want to get to. It's not simply about losing. It's not just about getting silver medals and finishing as a runner-up. It's not just that you lost. The actual more significant detail is that the way you lost, the manner that you lost, the opponent that you lost against suggests that the flaw, the pattern of losing is in you. It's not that you just faced a bunch of opponents that were better than you every time and you never broke through and won. I mean, Sue didn't lose nine finals, six GSL finals at that, because he was the worst player in all those finals. A number of them he was the favorite in, a number of them he was a higher ranked player, a number of them he'd even actually beaten that player or would go on to beat that player later, but not in the finals. And so the finals and him being in finals and losing was the defining factor. I mean, if you go and look at his GSL finals, the guy literally got a minimum of two games in every single one of those six finals. And remember, you only need four games to win and many players have been swept in finals. It can happen. He was never swept. He was never held to one game. He always got at least half of the way there. Sometimes he even got three games and lost in game seven. Clearly, it was Sue and something about his mentality, not the opponent that cost him it. Just like it wasn't just a final technically because he did win finals elsewhere, right? As I said, he just won I am kind of eight here. Likewise, Team Liquid didn't lose six big finals in 2018 because they were the underdog or the worst team every time. Yeah, okay, they were an underdog against Astralis. They weren't the underdog when they played against um, Mouse Sports at ESL New York. They actually were the underdog when they played against Cloud9 at CS Summit that they ended up winning. So it wasn't just about being the underdog. They weren't the worst team every time. And even when they were the worst team against Astralis, you'd have still thought, odds are, you'd steal one of those files at least. I mean, they had the map pool to do it, the player strength to do it. Even the style was a similar matchup to Astralis. You don't always just get perfectly neutralized. That's one of the reasons I call Astralis the GSP of... Um, 
CSGO as well, because actually GSP famously also could definitely not be beaten by anyone who had his style. He just crushed all the people who were grind out wrestlers, ground and pound guys. He dominated those guys. Whereas actually, oftentimes, you can get out wrestled. John Fix has been out wrestled before. You can get out struck. Anderson Silver has been out struck before. You can get beaten with your style, but that was a very particular matchup that was making him lose. But that wasn't the only final they lost, as we saw with the ESL New York one. So then we have to look into another aspect is part of the reason that these particular players that were calling Kongs or teams that were calling Kongs, our Kongs, isn't just that they made finals. It's that they made so many finals because they were very, very good players or teams, essentially at a championship level. Hence, by the way, why famously all of these Kongs, the reason they get to so many finals is they're incredible in semifinals. Usually they've won more semifinals than they've lost. By the way, Yellow, also a very good player in semifinals. Sometimes they can even beat the same opponent in a semi-final, either before they face them in a later final and lose to them, or after in a later semi-final, some of they lost to in a final and beat them there. My mate Naniwa used to fucking do it all the time. Every time he lost to a guy in the final, I knew he'd beat that guy in a quarters or a group stage game or a semi-final later, but he'd lose to someone else in the final. Likewise... You obviously have to look and say, I mean, a classic example, that's got to be Sue, right? That guy fucking lost so many times in finals and then beat the same guy in the next GSL Cordes or a future GSL Cordes and then lost to a different person in the finals. He's losing a different people in every final, except by the end, I think he doubled up once and did two, two in, in a row. So, no, not in a row, two overall. So another detail, another nuance here is that it's not just about losing, because even when you win, that doesn't free you from being a Kong, depending on the circumstances of how you won. Now, this is an interesting detail that traces back to the original Kong, Yellow. Because if you go back in Yellow's career, a little-known detail about Yellow is that he beat Boxer many times. A lot of people think, if you asked a random fan who didn't watch Brood War, uh, tell, you know who Boxer is, right? Yep, yep. You know who Yellow is? Remember that guy, Boxer, Bunk Rush, three times? Yep, yep, yep. Right, what would you tell me about Yellow? Well, he was famous for being a Kong. You see, he never won anything. He always used to lose in the finals, a million silver medals, and then he always used to lose to Boxer as well. That's actually a complete myth, right? He actually, by the end of Brood War, had like almost, an, almost a 50-50 win rate against Boxer. He beat Boxer on numerous occasions just not in big finals he even won events and by the way events against other top players and prestigious players it's just they weren't prestigious events they were like third party tournaments they were one-offs or they were like specialist tournaments where it's like you know like good like top champion versus champion but it doesn't count the same way as winning an OSL than MSL the point is the fact that they actually win but not in the really big international finals in fact goes towards showing that they're Kongs it doesn't free them from being a Kong it shows they're a Kong because it shows they could beat these people or they could win, but it's not under these circumstances. And why not under these circumstances? Because there's some sort of a mental block. There's something that gets to them specifically mentally, no matter who they're playing, in those big finals, the big title they really wanted. So likewise with Sue, when he's just one I am Kadavitsi, he is still a Kong for me. I am Kadavitsi is really nice to him. If you're Serral or you're some other player, I'll say it. Yeah, pretty good to win that tournament. But when you've been in that many GSL Code S finals and lost, I'm sorry, if you're Sue, you have to win a GSL Code S final. That's when I'll stop calling you a Kong. Maybe like the SSL, if you think about that when that shit was running. That might have counted as well. This is a guy who, if it was about just winning a tournament, we should have stopped being a Kong in 2015, right? He won the Kesper Cup season two. Problem solved. He's not a Kong, right? Of course he is. That's a tournament that had loads of really good players in, Tim to players he'd play in Code S. It wasn't Code S though, was it? It wasn't a big tournament of that scale. So we know it doesn't count as much. And it's not a surprise that he won it. The pressure was less. It meant less. It wasn't the big title. Therefore, those factors that held him back weren't activated. It's not even that crazy a thing to speculate on, right? Likewise, Team Liquid won three tournaments over their different lineups. With Steel, they won CS Summit. Hey, they finished ahead of one of the great uh, lineups of all time. Uh, that's the bit of a tell that had won three titles at least the previous year ahead of Cloud9 that had just won the major. Then obviously with Taco at the very end of the year, they won the Supernova event, but that was a smaller event. Their opponent was NRG, who gives a fuck. Then they won I Bad Power Masters early this year. You might be saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, Foreign. Come on, I Bad Power Masters. They beat Astralis in the final. I agree. But as I told you, where Yellow beat Boxer and other great players in small finals to win, that doesn't stop him being a Kong. Like, does the fact Team Liquid won I Bad Power Masters make you believe, oh, no problem. Now they're going to win all the majors and all the big internationals. No, you still know that they need to get over that hump just like I do. It wasn't 
wasn't as meaningful an event. If they'd had even slightly less players, it would be considered a significantly worse event. It was only really the teams that were buying that one up. It's not a well-established set of tournaments. It was mainly North American or American, including Brazilian players, playing at those tournaments in the past. It wasn't all the top tier tournaments in the world, even though this time around it had a very good lineup. Also, we saw the way it was run wasn't as professional and it wasn't as much pressure when you're on the stage at the fucking... To, uh, arena that takes place in, in contrast to playing at ESL New York or EPL finals or, God forbid, the major final if Team Liquid with this core ever make it to one of those. No, that's, it's not the scenario, right? So there's another scenario I want to talk about here, which is essentially what prompted me to make the video, which is that in StarCraft 2, there was this weird scenario where Sue, Stats and Dark beat only each other except for Dark, who technically beat Solar. But other than that, they beat each other to win their titles. So are Sue, Stats and Dark no longer Kongs? No, that doesn't really make sense. And in fact, that's another detail that I want to get to because this has already been figured out with a legendary set of Kongs at the end of StarCraft Brood War, talking about the end of the 2000s, which was Stork was one of the, take Bang Lee Sang, the four gods who hadn't won his OSL. Well, he finally won his OSL. He beat the player Fantasy. Fantasy was in back-to-back -back finals, made many finals himself. Fantasy finally won an OSL. You know how? He played Stork and he beat Stork and won one. Couldn't beat anyone else in finals. Didn't beat Jadon when he was in finals against him. Jang B won his OSLs too by beating Fantasy both times. Fantasy couldn't beat Jang B. Jang B beat Fantasy. He won them. Other than that, he lost in a final. He lost to Bisu. Fantasy lost to Jadong. Jang B lost to Bisu. Stork lost to all the Tick Bang League Sang Flash, Jadong, and Bisu in finals. Well, the point is, when two Kongs play each other in what is the big final that they want to win, someone has to win. They can't both lose. They can't both choke. They can't both have the same pressure and nobody win. So when someone wins in that scenario, it doesn't remove the stain of being a Kong, I'm afraid. It's definitely better than winning a third party or smaller event over anyone and saying, well, at least I won. Yeah, it's definitely better than that, but it's still not the same as freeing you from the Kong line. And so another nuance I think we have to add in here that decides whether you're a Kong is kind of like what I alluded to before. Like, were you ever a favorite? Did you ever actually have a decent chance to win these finals? Because to me, who you lost to also defines if you're a Kong, because quite frankly, there's some people shouldn't be considered Kongs, even though they haven't won, or shouldn't be considered Kongs because they actually weren't good enough to win anyway, even though they made a couple of finals, right? So in CSGO, I would say the NRG team that made the final of Supernova and uh, Star Series Season 5, they aren't Kongs. Like, they weren't supposed to win those finals. They weren't top team in the world. It's not like they would generally beat those other teams. They obviously did beat Team Liquid elsewhere. It's not like they would generally beat those teams in a best of three elsewhere. And it's just the big moment of the final. They were a worse team. Likewise, okay, one of my favorite tennis players, he's now retired, sadly, is Andy Murray. Now, Andy Murray... If everyone remembers, it took him, I think, five Grand Slam finals before he finally won a Grand Slam. Now, he actually shouldn't even have been considered a Kong prior to winning that Grand Slam because his only finals losses were to Federer and Djokovic, two of the top five players of all time, two of the dominant players of the era we're discussing. So already it doesn't matter at this point in time because actually not only did Murray go on to win Grand Slams, but he won it over those players as well. Like he won a gold medal at the Olympics over Federer. He won his two of his Grand Slams over Novak Djokovic. And then he beat someone completely different, uh, Rauich, Rauich, in the Wimbledon final and showed it wasn't about just playing in the Wimbledon final. It was about playing fucking godlike players like Federer and Djokovic in Wimbledon finals. So he shouldn't ever have been a Kong anyway. Now, as I alluded to before, Stork, Fancy, Jangby definitely are Kongs. But here's what's funny. It's actually, to me, not that big a deal some of the finals they lost. Because if you're losing to people like Bisu, Flash, Jadon, these are, again, top five players of all time, top ten players of all time, godlike players. Players who had dominant periods in StarCraft Brood War, who had dominant eras. So as a result, just losing to them isn't enough. To me, the fact that you all lost to each other, that already is a big problem, except Jangby didn't technically lose to the others in finals. And also, you should probably have made a different final and won against someone else if you hadn't have been a Kong also, because like, it's not like those players were in every single final. Though admittedly, it's a nice a, a analogy to the tennis example, because they did make a lot of the finals of that era. Now, this is one of the reasons why when someone is a Kong, I don't just pull for them to win. I don't just want them to win. I want them 
to get over the hump. And that means to win the big final, not just against another Kong, ideally against someone very great, a truly great team, a championship team, a dominant team, maybe even your main nemesis. I pull for a team who or player who's a Kong to win against the harshest odds and the best opponents and their nemeses so that then they have broken the Kong curse. That's why... I want them basically to slay the demon in themselves, not just the opponent that they face outwardly in the server on a stage. That's why one of my favorite MMA fighters was the great trash talker and ground and pound wrestler, Chael Sonnen, right? He technically, on, on some level, shouldn't be a Kong because back when his weight class used to fight in the WEC, which is a lesser organization eventually bought by the UFC, uh, it was the case that he actually technically should have been the WEC champion. He won uh, about... Against the Brazilian fighter, I won't bother going into it, you won't know who he is if you didn't follow the, the game very much back then, who was a truly great fighter himself, teammate of Anderson Silva's actually, but he beat that guy when that guy actually was in a bad state in his life. He had drug problems, he had mental problems at the time, he actually came in overweight, and as a result of coming in overweight, it was no longer titled, uh, called a title fight, because his opponent didn't make weight. So when he beat him, I mean, technically, he should be the champion, right? Should have broken his line of being the Kong, if you think about the rest of his career. But he didn't. Now, what's a cool detail is his opponent actually did send him the belt because his opponent basically said, like, come on, you did beat me and it's my fault uh, not weighing in, so you are technically the champion. That's why I don't want him to be granted that belt and to no longer be a Kong. That wouldn't really change it. I want him to have won the fight against Anderson Silva, one of the scariest opponents of all time, a GOAT candidate. And when he almost won the belt off him at UFC, what was it, like 187 or something? So around that, around that kind of number. That's what I would have rather happened. That would have broken the line. That would have changed, his, the, turned his career. That would have changed his reputation, would have removed the stain of being a Kong. So what is a Kong anyway? It's not just someone who lost a lot in finals. This video was supported by Dean Tanglis, Andreas Snazor Westerland, James Harding, Nate D-O-double-G, Ollie J, Tobias Bernasconi, Travis Greb, Tristan Jones, Daniel Olivar, Jiang Heng Lu, and special thanks, as always, goes out to Jerky's Minion, one of my OGs. Do you want to suggest a topic or a guest for my content? Maybe you want to ask me a question. I have a monthly AMA. Perhaps you want teasers for who the next guests are on my upcoming talk shows. Maybe you want to be part of my monthly discussion where my top patrons talk to me. Well, put your money where your mouth is and join the Skrilluminati today at the description box link for Patreon.